repeat and affirm. I always repeat and affirm what they say. I'm not trying to paraphrase. I want to use your exact words so that I'm part of your tribe. You get it. I want to mirror and match you. I want you to feel comfortable with me so you go, oh, this guy gets me. So I always agree with no matter what you say and just kind of repeat it to you so you know I've heard it. What up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today I'm bringing you back a special treat. You know, it's funny as I look at the metrics from our downloads, I see that the episodes that we do role play in scripts are some of the more downloaded or most downloaded episodes. So I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. So it really tells us about our listenership. So that said, we're bringing you back Derek Lipsky who is unbelievable at role play and not just at role play but at conversion uh, but we do a great role play on this interview and he goes we go through the whole process of converting an expired seller from the initial call all the way through pre-qualifying and setting the appointment and then taking the listing so it's a fantastic interview and what a what a great time of year for that where you know there are fewer people making the calls right now and the, the people are just super motivated and if you want to check him out on, on YouTube, I, the guy's got videos with like almost 250,000 downloads. So he's just killing it. You know, I'm super excited to get you into this episode. And also, uh, you know, holidays, want to wish everybody a, a, a fantastic holiday. Christmas, if it's Hanukkah, whatever it is, I just want to wish you guys a fantastic holiday. And you rock and enjoy Derek Lipsky. We are here today with the one and only... Derek Legendary Lipsky. What's going on, man? What's up, David? How are you, my friend? I'm doing fantastic. Good to hear it, man. My old role play partner, man. I actually kind of miss uh, role playing with you, man, back in the day. Yeah, we're going at it. Me, you, Glover. Uh, yeah, all crazy. that's right. Now everyone's everyone superstars. That's right. Jeff Glover was part of that crew, too, back then. Yeah, we used to yeah, yeah. beat each other up, man. So yeah. before we get started, it's an honor to have you on. We're going to hammer into some expired work today. I know you're, you're still in the trenches, hardcore. Mm-hmm. Last year, as an individual agent, you did 52 units. Uh, you said about half of your business comes from expireds and FISBOs. Correct. The other yep. half from Sphere of Influence. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, maybe the CNN version of Derek Lipsky. Okay, 15 years in the business, uh, roughly 50 to 60 homes, depending on the year, every single year. One man band, I do everything from cradle to grave. Awesome. So you, I know you got a, a boot camp coming up uh, or an expired mastery program, Derek. You know, So let's just get right into it. You know, uh, I know you from cold calling. You've been doing this a long time. How, how many years have you actually been cold calling, like Fizzbos and Expireds? I'd say I've been in the business 15 years. I've been cold calling for probably 10. Okay, got it. I door knocked before that. I was just door knocking. I didn't even know what to say. You know, but then I got into ferry and I started cold calling. Yeah, it's interesting because now we're kind of going back to doing some door knocking now where I hadn't door knocked in years. I actually went and hit a couple doors today just yeah. be- because of the uh, sheer amount of people that are, that are calling now. Are you guys doing that as well? Yeah, and low inventory forces you to do that. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, you guys, you have more agents calling, right? And less people to call. So, yeah, you got, you got to be I tell creative. You what, I tell you David, one of the quick things I see is I see all these guys online promoting these different things about how to get new listings, and everyone says Cole Collins dead. Cole Collins dead? Are you kidding me? I've never had a higher-level competition in my entire life. You've got everyone in the grandmother calling now. Yeah, no, I, I agree with everyone's calling. I, I don't know if they're saying it's dead, saying it doesn't work anymore. I know everybody's calling, but, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know, dude. I I got people that are just straight out angry. All I do is say my name, and I'm a realtor, and they're like out of their mind. So, right, yeah, it's just a sheer amount of people that are that are calling now. So, how do you stand out above that? Let's talk about that. Well, I try to be different. I try to be. I, I obviously, you know, one of the things I had to develop quickly was a different script because everyone's using the KW script, the Ferry script, Tom Ferry script. They all have this, their own script. So we and those scripts all pretty much sound exactly the same, just reworded differently. So I had to develop a different script so I would sound different. And I worked on my sales skills to come off more genuine. You know, Marin Match, a lot of techniques you throw in there with people, pace and lead, um, some NLP, a lot of different things to try to make you sound more genuine. And plus, because I've been doing it so long, I can actually be present in the conversation versus trying to look, read my script to see what the next question I want to ask is because I know this. I know the scripts already. Mm, got it. Yeah. So yeah. you just gave us a lot in that sentence yeah. there. So. Uh, you said uh, mirror and matching, being present, NLP, 
Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there, right? Knowing your scripts is the biggest thing. So, I mean, so you're not worried about asking this question. You can actually listen to the answer and respond to that and keep it a conversation. Hmm. So how are you still practicing your scripts? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, I practice my scripts. I read them out loud. I have role play partners still. Basically, a role play once a day, 15 minutes, just going back and forth like we used to do it. Uh, and then in the morning, while I'm at the gym, I may say some of my scripts. So when I get home, I have these... Uh, I don't know, the presentation boards kids use for school, but I have all my scripts just, just taped to it, and I just run through it every day quickly just to stay sharp. All right, awesome. So here's what I'd like to do. It's something I, I did this with Aaron uh, Wittenstein. You must know who he is, right? Sure. The Fizzball guy, good kid. Uh, I mm-hmm. did this with him a couple months ago. We kind of went through the whole process, like from the start to the end. We did it with him with a Fizzball. With you, we're going to do it with an expired and then just kind of cool. we'll break down the whole script and everything, and all the components of it, and then, and then we'll get to the end. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right, so why don't we just start right here. So I'm, a, I'm an expired. My house just came off the market, and uh, I'm not going to be easy by any means. I'm going to be a regular, okay, I, I... regular Massachusetts guy. All right, I appreciate that. Okay, ring, ring. Yeah, hello. Hello, I'm looking for, I'm looking for David. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's up? David, good morning. This is Derek Liske from Keller Williams Real Estate. Have you heard of us? Uh, yeah, well, I've heard of Keller Williams because, yeah, you've had about 15 guys call me so far this morning. As a matter of fact, can you tell them to take me off the list? Um, I'll make a note of that right now. I, I guess we're all calling you because we're all seeing the same thing. I saw your property come off the market, and I just didn't know if you had sold it or that was still for sale. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, if I sold it, then uh, it probably wouldn't be coming off the market, right? Well, you'd be surprised how many times it actually does do that. I don't know if agents don't want credit or what happens, but most likely, yeah, right. You wouldn't see it come off the market. Well, I, I, as I'm looking at it today on computer screen, David, it looks like a great home. I can see you have the in-ground pool. you got a finished basement. you got the kitchen up to date. It's hard to believe that this didn't sell, especially in this market. Were you having much luck when it was on the market, David? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess we, what do you consider much luck? Well, did you have any showings? Did you get any offers at all? Yeah, we got we got some really low ball offers. You know that that's it. We had a couple showings. Uh, honestly, it's just the, the whole process just kind of sucked. So, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. I think we're gonna. Uh, you know, we just we kind of had it. So again, you know, if you you guys have actually kept me on the phone longer than everybody else today somehow. Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how you pulled that off, but. Yeah, I mean, if you could just uh, let your office know, though, we, we've decided not to sell. We may look at it again in the, uh, in the fall. Well, I appreciate that, and I'll certainly tell them at the front desk. A quick question before you go. Hey, what do you think stopped us from selling, honestly? Uh, what do, why, like I said, I, I think, you know, the agent didn't really do very much. Um, I think, mm-hmm. you know, I had a, a lot of bozos coming in my house that didn't even know the house. You know what I mean? My mm-hmm. agent wasn't yeah. here for the showings. Um, so, you know, he's got people walking around the house, have no idea. It was just the whole thing was real frustrating, you know, and then I got this low ball offer. Like, I don't know what these people are looking at. So, you know, just really, just really disappointing uh, process for me. Yeah, I mean, I'd be disappointed too. You got bozos walking around the house. You probably don't even know if the people are pre approved. They're making these low ball offers hoping you're going to jump at it. I mean, that's, that's no way to do it. And I'm sure they wanted you to drop the price, and that's certainly not a way to sell the house. So, I can definitely see why you're getting frustrated. You might want to take a break with it. How did you pick that agent that you had last time? Um, you know, I actually, he was referred to us. He sold a, another house of one of our friends. I mean, he's not a bad guy. Don't get me wrong. I right. uh, just, I, you know, I don't know. It just, this whole thing has just been, it's been tough, man. Yeah, no, it, it, I tell you, it's tough for a lot of agents. And I understand that for sure. And what was he saying to you as why he wasn't able to get the home sold for you? Was he blaming anything? Uh, well, he just kept telling me to reduce the price and, you know, and oh, I think that's, God. yeah, that's, that's, uh, no way. Not in this house. I mean, you kidding me? That's not a marketing approach to take a price, take, keep taking the price down until it sells at a rock bottom price. I mean, you don't want to use that approach, do you? Well, no, of course not. That's why, uh, you know, that's why we took the house off the market. I'm not just going to give the house away. And then we got some other knucklehead coming in offering us this re- absurd offer. Right, yeah. Who wants an absurd offer? And you don't have a strong agent representing you to defend your price. I'll tell you what, it looks like a great home. And I'm sure we can both agree it's very saleable. Where do you plan on going when this one does sell for you? Uh, well, we have a place in Boca. I mean, we have a, we have another uh, condo up there. So we, you know, that's the other thing. We don't have to sell this house. You know, it's not like we need to sell it. We're not going to give yeah. it away. Right. Well, can we make a deal if you give it away? Can you give it to me? 
Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever, bud. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I tell you, it's exciting. So you are trying to get down to Boca. You have a condo down there. Do you have any family down there or any jobs? Or are you retired? Or what's the situation with you, David? Yeah, we have a, we, I mean, we, we have a health and uh, fitness uh, and nutrition business. So that's, that's what we do. So, we, you know, we like to spend the winters down there. And then, you know, we'll come up here. So, but, you know, at the same time, we don't need this big house anymore. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, I've got a lot of money into this house. And uh, just not going to give oh, it yeah. away. No, no, I, and I don't think you have to, David. I and mean, let's both agree that the home is very saleable, and I, I don't think the price is going to be an issue. I think the issue might be the marketing here. So the only thing stopping you from getting down to Boca in the condo and living the snowboard life where you're down there for the, down there for the uh, winter and you're back up here for the summer and obviously selling your supplements and all that stuff, is it just the sale of this house? No, because like I said, we're already down there. It's, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, it, ultimately the sale of the house, but I don't have to sell, you know? Not like some right. of those other sellers out there that have to sell that are just giving their houses away. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know what's happened in this marketplace, but I can tell you that what I've seen happen is that interest rates are climbing. So uh, buyers are chomping at the bit to get in and locking their price. And I know typically we don't have both, high prices and high interest rates. So something's going to shift there. I'm not saying the market's going to crash tomorrow, but what I am saying, it makes more sense to sell it now. And I guess the question for you would be, if you knew you could make more money selling now rather than waiting until fall, would you sell the home now for more money? Yeah, of course I would. Right, of course you would, exactly. Well, when do you plan on being back up here, David? Well, I'm here now. Oh, I thought you said you're down Boca. All right, so let's do this. Before you commit to keep the house off the market for another six months, potentially maybe lose money, let's get together today. It'll only take me 20 minutes. I can show you not only how I'm different from other agents, but how I can make your home different from other listings on the market. I can come by today at 4 or tomorrow at 5, whatever's better for you and your family. Well, do you have a buyer for the house? I, I don't know. I haven't seen the property yet, so I don't know if the buyers I'm working with are right for it, but I can promise you this. If at the end of our meeting you hire me, I'll be looking for a buyer tomorrow. So is 5 o'clock good today, or would tomorrow at 6 be better for you? Yeah, let me, uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me talk to my wife, see what she says. I know we made a, kind of a, an agreement to keep it off uh, till the fall. So do you, if you want to, I'll get back to you. What's, what's, your, what's your phone number? Uh, my number is 508-326, blah, 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 blah. But, no, I certainly understand that. Um, I mean, obviously I'm married too, so I get the whole idea of you guys are partners and you want to talk about it together. Let me ask you, how long have you guys been married for? How long have we been married? Uh, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know, five years. Okay, so I guess the honeymoon's over. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if she, you would tell her that, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, where well, are you going with this man? Like, well, what's, I, guess, what? I, guess the, I guess the idea is, here is this. Would she be okay? If you, what, if, what would she say if you called her and said, Honey, I got an agent who's going to get my home sold in the next three to four months for the money we're asking for, get us down to Boca, and let us go back and forth. What do you think she'd say if you had an agent with a proven plan able to come down today and meet? You think she'd be open for it? Uh, I think she'd probably be skeptical, to be honest with you, since uh, we're getting a lot of calls right now. And um, I think she'd sell if, yeah, if we really had somebody, but I think she'd be skeptical, kind of like me. Well, I, I don't blame you, and, and I get it, because you guys are on the market, and you're saying what's happened. I can assure you that the last four homes I listed in the last two weeks were all expired, and they all sold when they told me they weren't going to sell. I don't mind doing this, David. It's going to take me a couple hours of my time to get the research together and come down to present to you, but I can promise you this. After you meet with me, you're going to have a clear idea of what your home's worth, what we think was stopping it from selling, and what all the homes in the area are selling for. And that process should only take us about 10 to 20 minutes. And at the end of that meeting, if you guys decide you want to get back on, fantastic. If you don't, you can keep it off until fall. It's, it's okay with me. So is 5 o'clock good today, or would 6 o'clock be better for you and your wife? Um, yeah, why don't, we'll do, why don't we do 6 o'clock? But I'm telling you, I'm not gonna, I doubt we're going to list the house. If you want to take a look at it, that's fine with me. Yeah, well, I promise I won't even bring a contract in there with me. But at the end of the meeting, after we go through everything, if you feel you want me to hire, you want to hire me as your agent, is it okay if I say yes? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, David. Well, I look forward to seeing six o'clock. Oh, wait. Before I go, there's a couple questions I want to ask you, so I can cover what you want me to cover. All right. So why don't, why don't we stop? We'll stop there, and then we can get into okay. that after. All right. So, okay. so good job. I mean, you know, I I was definitely not easy on you. I may have taken you down a few bunny trails. But I thought it was really good how you handled a lot of the stuff. So some of the stuff you did in the beginning, you know, uh, like you talked about my in-ground pool, kitchen, all that stuff. Was there a reason you brought that up? 
First time I've really heard that well, on I, Inspire. So, so in my script, I, I usually say A, B, and C. The reason I bring in in-ground pools, I want you to know that I'm looking at it too, and I agree it's a good-looking house. So I'm giving you some facts that are showing you why I think it's good too. Like, yeah, you know, it's like got an in-ground pool. I can see you have modern colors, and it has updated kitchen. So I can't believe this didn't sell, can you? Right? Yeah, I'm yeah, letting I, you know that I've seen it. Yeah, that definitely stood out to me because it's something that uh, I, we, we don't do, and I think it would make it, it was almost like it made a connection. With mm-hmm. me, like, oh, okay, he get, he gets, he knows my house, he gets it. You know what I mean? So, right. yeah. uh, the other thing you did was uh, when you t- you uh, matched what I said when I said there was, you know, bozos walking around the house. You said the same thing after. Is that uh, intentional? Yeah, repeat and affirm. I always repeat and affirm what they say. I'm not trying to paraphrase. I want to use your exact words so that you, like, I'm part of your tribe. You get it. I want to mirror and match you. I want you to feel comfortable with me so you go, oh, this guy gets me. There are bozos. So I always agree with no matter what you say and just kind of repeat it to you so you know I've heard it. Okay, got it. So what about the, um, the price thing? Now, I was uh, maybe a little taken back on that, you know, when, uh, when, you, when I said uh, reduced price, and you're like, not on this house. Tell me why you, why you went that route. Because aren't you making the seller think like, oh, my God, my house is worth so much more money than it really is? Well, I didn't, I didn't say any of that. All I just said I don't think you might not need to reduce the price. And I, well, I'll cover more of that when I go over the listing presentation, obviously. And most sellers don't even remember me saying that. But, again, all I'm doing is building rapport. Like, he gets me. He understands me. You know what I mean? Mm. When I get there and go to the property, I'm going to go in detail over what's, what's going on with it. Oh, well, you have this. This house had that. So it's a little bit different than what you have. You know what I mean? So I'll go over those and point those out to the seller. But I don't want to do that over the phone. And uh, I wanted to say something to you when you said price. I wanted to make you more, again, more rapport building that I'm on your side, like with you, so that the end result is I get the appointment. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. All right, and good. especially in this market. I mean, if a home didn't sell, unless it's, unless it's drastically overpriced in the way the market's been appreciating, most of the homes that didn't sell in fall, uh, let's say 500000 and they are worth four fifty, maybe worth five hundred thousand in this market, or have a better chance of selling at that price than they would have in fall of last year. Got it. Okay, so now you go, you do some of your homework, you figure out. Holy cow! I'm asking nine fifty. The house is worth seven, right? So now you, what are you going to do? Okay, so now we're going to do the pre qual. So, uh, so say it again. I, I found out that I, I found yeah, out the I'm, home. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for nine fifty. The house is worth seven. Okay. So I'm going to give you a call back for pre-qualification. And let's not say seven, because that, cause honestly, that one I probably wouldn't go on. Got it. Uh, because that would be too much of a, of a difference there. But let's well, say it's how worth, would you handle let's that say difference, worth, let's though? Say it's, let's, let's, well, I would, if I was on the phone with somebody and there's a $200,000 difference, I'm going to call them. Right, my pre-qualification is going to be different than what so let's uh, do both. I'd I'd like, so let's do both. I'd like to hear okay. you do both. So, let, so right. let, let's do the first one, what you said, the, the analogy you yep. said, 950 and yep. it's worth seven. So I'm, I'm going to call you ring, ring. Hello. Hey, David, it's Derek with Keller Williams. How are you? Uh, hey, good. What's up, Derek? I, I just had a few questions I want to ask you. I've been doing some research on your property, and a few things came up that I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the house. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Well, I can see that you were asking 950 for last time, and I'm looking at the comps in the area, and all the homes built in your neighborhood by the same builder roughly in the same time for the same size are selling in the $700,000 range. So I'm wondering what the gap of the difference of the two hundred grand, and how did you get to that point where you said you wanted nine hundred for it? Well, actually, it's nine fifty. Um, yeah. Well, because uh, like we have the pool, uh, like you mentioned on our first call, we mm-hmm. have a uh, really nice uh, high end kitchen. You know, it's all sub zero thermidor. You know, it's uh, just that we feel like our house is, is worth more. We've got a, you should see our master bathroom shower. I mean, you'll see it when you come over. Uh, we've got the finished basement. Uh, we've got $75,000 worth of landscape or a hardscape. I mean, it, the house is amazing, dude. You've got to see it. Well, I'll tell you what. Those all have values, and I just want to make sure when I come out there, I'm bringing the right comps with me. So I have the comps that I have here. Do you have any comps that I'm not aware of maybe that justify your price? Well, no. I mean, and this is what we dealt with last time with the agent. You know, same thing. So if this is the road we're going down, because, I mean, you know, he was the same thing. Well, you know, I don't have – because, again, we got to add value for all this stuff, Derek, that we added. You know, and I get a theater no, room. 100%. Yeah, 100%. The, the, only, the only issue we arrive at is that's not dollar for dollar in today's market. So when you put in a new theater room or you put in an in-ground pool, let's say you've been there for 10 years, let's say – 
out of those 10 years, you've had 10 good years of use of it, but now that pool is not brand new. That theater room is not brand new. We can't charge what you want because there's been a lot of depreciation on the property. So I, I guess I just, and you sound like a really reasonable guy, David, so I just wanted to approach you first and find out about that and make sure that when I bring comps over, if I can show you homes that are like yours that have upgrades like yours, that you're going to look at that reasonably and say, okay, I understand this a bit more further because I've been, you know, obviously more educated than maybe someone else would have given you with all the documentation in front of you that you'll say, I want to price this thing to fair market value. You don't want to just overprice it because that's what you want. And it sounds like you're that kind of a person. Is that correct? Well, I, <laughs> I feel like, you know, I, I, wa I want to get my money back. I mean, we paid uh, you know, seven for the house, and we put like three hundred fifty thousand into it. So, I mean, even selling it at nine fifty, we're at a loss, and that's that's my fear. Well, and that's my fear too, because the reality is, uh, the last thing I want to see see you do is put the home on the market at a price that it won't sell, and have it sit there and be disappointed by me. Because the last thing I want to do is, is just to tell you what you want to hear at the, at the presentation, and just put the home on the market like the last agent did, and then call you every week with disappointing news that we don't have any offers. The real role of my job to do is to sit down with you and tell you exactly what you need to hear to make a decision. And I'm going to tell you maybe what you might not want to hear, but I'm going to be an a unbiased third party. I'm going to show you comps and, and facts that justify the price I'm going to tell you the home was worth. And at the end of that meeting, it's going to be your decision to list it or not, but I just want to make sure you know that when I come in there, I'm going to be giving you sort of a 25-minute a, a education on what the homes are selling for in the area, and, and I'm going to be looking to, for you to price it at the right amount, which is fair market value, whatever that amount may be. It may be the 950, but it looks to me like it's going to be a little bit less than that. So if you can only sell for 950, and that's the number you have to have, is it? Again, I'd like to sell for 950. I mean, I think that's, in my opinion, what I feel it's worth, but um, I'll... Yeah. Certainly, listen and take a look at what you have. Um, but like I said, okay. I'm not. We're not going to give this house away. So yeah, and uh, I, don't seven, I mean, se I'm not seven. If you're thinking seven hundred, you're crazy, dude. Well, I'm saying the homes in your area sold for seven hundred. That's what we're going by. We're going by what homes sell in the area and what comps have. That's why I actually have any comps because what I'm using is what an appraiser is going to use. And even if I could find you to buy to pay nine fifty for the property, if it doesn't appraise, you can't sell it anyway. So it's just a waste of time for everybody. And the last thing I want to do is waste your time because I know it's valuable. You've got a lot of stuff to do. So it sounds like you're reasonable. You'll be open to suggestion. And if I can show you what the home is worth, you can make a decision at that time if you're going to sell or not, correct? Yeah, I can do that. Sounds good. I may not have even have gone on that one at that point, to be honest with you. I may have just canceled that one. Got it. Okay. If you're too far apart like that, that's a big gap. And even if I went there and said 750 or 800 and had all the comps showed, it sounds like you'd be stuck on your number. No, I, I just would you have used the approach like you know how would you like I would might have said how would you respond if somebody offered you 825. Yeah, I mean, I could have done. You know that. what I, I mean? Just at that point. yeah, no, I know you're saying that. Sort of an a la carte to see what yeah, he Yeah, because you know, just kind of gay. And it, oh my god, you know what I mean? Because I felt like you were winning me over. Seriously, like I can't wait to go yeah. back and listen to this because right. I I really felt like you were winning me over. I thought you did a great job with it. So, Thanks. so really, I, I really do. And yeah, right. It sometimes you just you don't go right for our listeners. Sometimes the best thing to do is just not to go, right? You don't want to waste their time or your time. So, yeah, the right. last thing you do is take, take an overpriced listing. I mean, and have it sit there for six months and have a bad reputation in the company. Masters, I'm going to get you right back to the show. We have a couple really, really cool things going on. If you love podcasts as much as I do, which I'm assuming you do if you're listening here, you're going to love audiobooks. And Audible is the largest and best resource for audiobooks out there. If you want to get a free book, just go to davidsfreebook.com. You get yourself a free download. A couple recommendations. Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson is a fantastic book. Also, John Acuff has a book called Finish, which I feel is a, a, a read for everybody. Uh, they're both awesome. They're on Audible. So again, davidsfreebook.com and get yourself a free audiobook from Amazon. It's absolutely amazing. And again, I mean, you're getting a free book. Let's say you, you load it, you download it, you don't love the service for whatever reason, then you just cancel and you literally the book is free and you even get to keep it. Your credit card's never charged. The other thing is Gary V, man. Absolutely love Gary Vee. I'm, I'm studying Gary Vee and what he does with social media. He's got an event coming up in Miami on January 24th. It's called Agent 2021. Agent 2021. I will be there. I'd love to get as many real estate agents together and 
get our little group together. We'll do a mastermind. We'll just It would be amazing. So if you're interested in that event, go to my site, davidihill.com forward slash agent 2021. Again, davidihill.com forward slash agent 2021. Enjoy the rest of this interview. You are listening to One More Sale. Let's go back to that one quickly. We'll do the pre-call where it's not the numbers, not the difference. Uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, David. Uh, it's Derek with Keller Williams. How are you? Uh, uh, good, good. What's up, Derek? Well, uh, nothing much. I just have a few questions for you uh, before I come out so I can cover what you want me to cover and make sure I'm not wasting any time about your property. Do you got 10 seconds? Uh, yeah, yeah, 10 seconds, absolutely. Okay, great. <laughs> well, I guess the first one is if I come out to the house and you feel comfortable that I'm the guy to get the, you know, the household, are you ready to list the house with me when I come out there today at 6 o'clock? Oh, well, I, I already told you I wasn't signing, Derek. I told you that on our first call. Yeah, no, I, I get that. But at the end of our conversation, if you feel that you might want it, like you feel like I can get the home sold for you, are at least open to list it if you feel I'm the best agent and the home's better in my hands than anybody else's to, in terms of selling it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if, yeah, I, uh, that's, I, that's fair, I would say, if, okay. if, if okay. I feel that way. Uh, I'm, I would be open to that. Okay, two, uh, in your opinion, what do you think your house is worth in today's market realistically? Uh, I think it's worth 800. Okay. 800. Good. And are you interviewing any other agents? And if so, who? Uh, well, we're honestly, uh, <laughs> you're the only guy that got me this far. So, uh, we were actually thinking about interviewing, um, John, uh, over at, uh, uh Cobalt Banker. Uh, he does sell a lot of homes in this neighborhood, but like I said, we were really planning on waiting until the, till the fall. So, uh, we're not yeah, interviewing no, no, anybody that, that's now. Understand. Yeah, that's understandable. And, and for how much do you own the property, uh, including any seconds or HELOCs you might have on it? Uh, I don't know. Probably four fifty. Okay, we'll use that. As, that's fine for rough number four fifty. And could you describe the home for me? Uh, meaning, is there anything negative or positive that may affect price that I should know about before I get there? No, I don't. I don't think so, man. I think it's uh, it's good. I don't think. I, don't... I mean, I drove by. It looked nice. I saw it online. I just want to make sure there's no, no surprises when I get there. No, nothing I can think of. Okay. And you said you and your wife will be there, so both decision makers are going to be at the meeting today? Yeah, we'll be there. And do you have any questions for me before I come out? Uh, well, yeah. Well, in, just in case we did decide to hire you, what, what's your fee? Uh, I charge 100%. Is that okay? 100%? What do you mean? The full price. So 850 850 Yeah. I'm not really following you. What is your fee? It's a joke. My oh. fee is 100 percent negotiable, David. I'm just giving oh. you that time. There. My fee is 100 percent negotiable. You know, if I get there and you like what I have to say, and you want to hire me as agent, are you prepared to negotiate a commission that's going to be fair for you, fair for me, and cause the home to sell? Yeah, of course. Yep, okay. that sounds good. I'll do something fair for you. So we'll we'll cover it when I come out there today at six. Okay. All right. I'll see you then. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Perfect. All right, cool. So now I know why your your uh, YouTube's get like a hundred thousand views. <laughs> why, so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I thought I thought uh, I was into. I try to introduce humor. Th- is that the fun, same and, stuff and you're win. saying with to people though? I mean, if someone said that, how much is the commission? Is that what you're going to say to them? Oh, I've used all those lines. If you promise, you, if you give the house away, can you give it to me? Do I charge a hundred percent? People laugh at that. You know, um, what are what are some of the funny ones I've said? Uh, Oh, yeah, like I said to you, if you come by, we're not going to listen to you. Hey, I promise I'm not going to ask you, but at the end of that presentation, if you ask me to be agent, it's okay if I say yeah, yes. Yeah, I like that. So I, I, I use all that stuff, and I use it in moments where it's very awkward, because that's an awkward question that you ask. So it's an awkward moment about commission. So um, I could have just said the first part of that thing, but I like to make it a little bit of humor so people, again, more rapport building, people like people who are funny, who are like them. So I, I like that. You kind of didn't know how to play off it at first, so you just do kind of like you playing the role of the seller. Like, I don't know what that even means. Yeah, I, I knew what but, you were saying, but yeah, I, was, you know I, yeah, I, yeah, I right. think most it's sellers are going to be like, what are you talking about? So, right. And then, you know, obviously, depending on who you're talking to, Derek, I mean, if you're talking to someone that's just like doesn't feel like playing games right now, they're not going to. You wouldn't use that. They're not yeah. going yeah, yeah, to. They're, they're not going to engage. A little bit, so that's why I would bring it in. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. So, so you've done all that. Now you get to the house. So what, what's going on now? Okay, so we got all the research done. Um, basically, we're going to go to the house to the CMA. Um, I'll come knock on the door. Hello, yeah. What's up, Derek? Hey, David. Derek, how are you? Good, good. What's up, brother? Come on uh, in. Not much. Not much. Thanks for having me over. I'm excited to come down and take a look at the property. Do you mind if I take a quick look at the property before we sit down? 
Sure, yeah. Why don't you go through? Do I'll, I'll, you have anything I can wait here and uh, look at while you're walking through the house? Uh, yeah, actually, you start looking at the CMA if you want to look at some of the comps we'll be looking at today. All right, cool. So we'll fast forward. You walk through the house. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. All right. Hey, David, uh, thanks for showing me the house. It's a beautiful property. Uh, it's, it's definitely saleable. I guess I wanted to ask you and your wife. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your wife's name? Uh, v. Hey, V. Um, nice to meet you, ma'am. So I, I'm glad to have you guys here. On the way over here, I was thinking of some of the questions I wanted to ask you. And I guess the first one is, do you absolutely want to sell your home? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, perfect. And will you price the home to sell, or did you want to keep it on the market for a long period of time? No, we don't want, I mean, we don't want to keep it on the market. Uh, we want to sell it when, we, when we're ready. Right, exactly. And did you want me to handle the sale for you? Uh, well, if, I mean, if you're, if you're capable of it, yeah. Okay. Well, at, at the end of my presentation tonight, one of three things is going to happen, David. Uh, number one, you'll have the opportunity to list the home with me. Number two, you might decide not to list the home with me. Or number three, I'll decide not to take the listing. And any one of these is going to be fine. It's, all, it's going to be no pressure here tonight, David, at all. If you decide I'm the right guy, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay, too. Fair enough? Yeah. All right. So when I talked to you on the phone, I asked, I asked you a few questions. Now, you said you were moving down to Florida, or the Boca, right? Exactly. Now, you said you were going there because you wanted to go back and forth. Winter's down there, summer's up here, and you have um, a, a fitness company that you work with or yeah, that you own. Yeah, health, nutrition, supplements, and, and products. Perfect. And fitness, okay. yep. As far as the time frame, there really was none there. You were happy to wait till fall if you had to, so there's no pressure to make the move today. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll wait if we have to. We just want to make sure we're getting the most money out of the sale. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what my job is to get you the most money. And you said, do you think the home's value is about 850? Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I said 800, but if you can get me 850, that would be great. 800, gotcha. And you said you owe about 450 on the property still? Uh, yep, exactly. All right. And you weren't planning on selling yourself, were you? Uh, well, I don't know. Should I? I probably could do a better job than the last guy. Uh, I, I certainly don't blame you on, on that. I saw the listing, and I certainly agree with that statement. Well, I, I guess so. The, at the end of the day, David, what we're trying to do is figure out the home's value here. We want to look at a lot of different factors. Um, so the, one of the factors we're going to look at is your ma motivation to sell the home, and number two is the price you set on your home. Now, I prepared what we call a comparable market analysis, and there's two parts to this kind of research. Part one we call fantasy land. It's where homeowners put their homes for sale. It's the active listings. And then part two we call reality. It's what real estate agents like me list and sell homes for. Uh, it's the sold listings. It's what homes actually sold from this market. And we're going to have to decide tonight whether you're going to spend your time in fantasy or reality. Fair enough? Hmm. Yeah, that sounds fair. Uh, I mean, we, okay. obviously we, we want to be in reality. We don't, we don't want to waste any more time. So... Um, yeah, you know, I don't blame you. I mean, six months is long enough, and this home should have had a sold sign on it three months ago, correct? Exactly. So do you think you can sell this house for uh, 800 You know what? Let me go through some of the costs and show you exactly what I'm seeing. So uh, it's good that you brought that up because at today's value, we're trying to figure out what the value is. And we get our values basically from buyers because the buyers make the offer, and whatever offer you accept is based on the value of that particular home. So the sold we look at, a buyer made an offer. A seller accepted it, that's the value of the property. And that can be good or bad for you, because if a seller has to sell fast and they drop the price dramatically low, it lowers prices in the whole area. Uh, Counter-wise, if they put the home on the market at a great price that sells in a day and it sells for over-asking, it raises values up. So what we're trying to do is determine value in today's market. And do you know how buyers determine value, David? Um, the Internet, I guess. Yeah, the Internet's definitely one of the sources. They look at the Internet. They are very savvy today. They look at what other homes sold for in the area. They look at what homes are active and they compare them both together and figure out what they're going to offer you on the property. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. So what we're trying to do is figure out what they're thinking based on the facts. And these guys use Kelly Blue Book. They use Zillow. They use all these different things. And, and sellers look at these two as sort of the, a mark of what they think the homes were. But what we're doing today is what an appraiser would do. We're looking at the homes that sold in the area. We're looking at the comps going, okay, based on square footage, based on amenities, this home is worth X. And that's what we're trying to figure out with your property. So let's look through some of the comps. And I'd go through the property of the comp and say, okay, here's three homes that were on the market that are in your neighborhood. They were built by the same builder, the same year, and the same development. Uh, one sold for 750. It was in the market for 35 days. The second one sold 
for 800. It was in the market for 15 days, and the last one sold for 825, and that was in the market for 158 days. Uh, do you know all these houses, David? Uh, yeah, actually, the one that sold for uh, for 800 is uh, is a friend of mine. So, and uh, actually, I'm I'm glad you brought that comp because uh, I didn't realize he got 800. Yeah, so, so he got 800 for that. How did that house compare to yours? Uh, mine is actually better than his. Uh, you know, we have uh, nicer. Uh, appliances. We have uh, upgraded uh, fixtures. I, I think our bathroom, our master bath, is better. So his might be a yeah. little, a bit, bit larger, but um, I would tell you we have better amenities and features. Well, he's got forty-two hundred square feet, and this house is thirty-one fifty. So he's got a uh, thousand and fifty square feet more than yours, right? Yeah, I know it's a larger home, but like I said, with our amenities and our, you know, our features, I think we're we're in better shape. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're certainly in better shape with newer amenities. Let's both agree upon that because that makes the house saleable. So you invested wisely by putting the money back in there. Um, so when we look at the properties that sold, we look at that one. So there's definitely comp in the neighborhood for you, so that's definitely helpful. Another one that sold for 750 you saw that one? Did you know that house? Uh, yeah, I've seen it. I, yeah, nothing special about that. Yeah, that house is the same, same size as yours. It was 3150 Again, it was built the same year. They have an in-ground pool as well. They have an updated kitchen like you do, and they have updated baths. So a very similar home to yours um, in terms of size and the menus that it has there. Um, so that's another good comp for us to look at. And the last one was at 825 Now, this one was a monster. This was 6,000 square feet, three-car garage. Um, it had an in-law and it also had the pool with an Olympic-sized pool in there. So obviously we know why they got a bit more than everybody else, correct? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, let me ask you this, David. Being a buyer, being reasonable, and looking at these comps like we're looking at them today, where do you think your home fits in? Do you feel comfortable if the home still fits in at 800, um, which is a house that sold for 1,050 square feet more than you? Or do you feel it's somewhere between the 750 and 800 where you have another home that sold for the same amount as you had but the same square footage? Well, you know, I keep seeing all these things on social media, like, you know, open houses, inventory's low. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about that last night, my wife and I, multiple offers. So I think if we start a little higher, um, it's possible we could get that higher number, right? Well, I mean, anything's possible. Um, what, we're looking, what we're talking about today is reality. And so what we look at is, has the market risen since this last home at 750 and a neighbor's home at 800 sold in the last 90 days? Has the market shifted any more than that? Inventory is certainly still where it was. That's for a fact. So these guys came on at a great time. They got the home on the market and sold. But the only difference is, David, here's the one thing that is really stopping me. Your home was on the market at the same time these were, and it didn't sell. Hmm. Yeah, and you I, had showings. Interesting. Um, Why do you think it didn't sell compared to these two? Why do you think other people left your house and bought your neighbor's house and bought your other neighbor's house? I don't know. Uh, like I said, I don't think the other agent did a good enough job of, you know, really selling the house to the people. I mean, why do, yeah. why do you think? Well, I, I don't know. I wasn't there, so it's hard for me to make a decision on what was, what was said or what wasn't said. But I can tell you this, that if you had jobs in the market and you had agents who, were, who brought ready, willing, able buyers to the property and they could see it, whether someone showed it to them or not, they could actually walk through it and see it for themselves. And I could be honest with you, David, most people know if they like a house the minute they walk in. They kind of go in and go, I like it, I don't like it, based on whatever they see. So they don't usually need to be sold unless they're on the edge. But most people, when they look at a house, they make an offer if they like it. And it looks like everyone left yours and made offers on these because they found better value somewhere else. So that's concerning to me because... It's not like these are six months old and your home wasn't on the market. You were competing with them there, so other people found value. And the last thing I want to have happen again is to have three other homes come on that are priced a little bit more aggressive than we are and use our house as a bounce house. Do you know what a bounce house is? No. A bounce house is an agent will take someone to your house and show the property at 800000 and go, hey, if you like this one at 800 wait to see this one at 750 that has the similar amenities you do, and that's going to be a house that's going to sell every single time. So your home actually helps other homes sell, which we see here, right? These mm. people saw your property and bought this one. Do you want your house to be a bounce house? No, no way. We just want to get this house sold, man. So what, what do you think? Where should we price it? Let's just get this done. Well, here's what I think. Here's what I think you should do, David. I do think the markets appreciate a little bit more than it, than it has since these homes have sold. So let's do this. Let's be in fairness and say, I'd like to get this property on the market for seven seventy five, And I think in that price point, if we list at that price, we're going to see an offer at full price 
or within 1% of asking. And if we put the house on the market today, I can almost guarantee you an offer within 90 days. Man, so it seems a little low, man. Uh, well, it's, it's lower than what we had, but it's based on the facts unless you have something else. All right. You know what? I, I'm, just, I'm not going to take a penny less. I'll tell you that. So if you get seven seventy five, we'll take it. But that's the bottom line right there. There's no room for negotiations. Perfect, David. I'm going to put this down seven seventy five. If any other offers come in under that, I'm still going to present them to you, as you know, and you make the decision whether you want them or not. Fair enough? All right. Cool. All right, man. Awesome. Good, good work, my friend. I, I thought that was awesome. You gave us a lot of solid uh, meat and potatoes. Uh, really, really good stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back and grab a lot of it because that's really good stuff that I hadn't heard before. So good work on the presentation. So, so tell us, uh, first off, I, a lot of uh, connecting with the person, a lot of agreeing. I think you're, even from the first call all the way through the meeting, it um, mm-hmm. seems like you're always in rapport, getting on that, their side of the table, right? Using my name a ton, uh, just always agreeing with me on everything, right? Yep. That's intentional. Of course, yeah. I want I want to be on your side, not against you. So I agree with everything. All right, awesome. So, so I mean, I think this the, the interview is is pretty self explanatory for our listeners. I would go back, listen to this thing over and over. Uh, Derek killed it for us today. Gave us some awesome content. Derek, what do you want to say to our listeners? Like, if somebody's, you know, they're saying, okay, you know, I want to go after expireds. What would be your piece of advice for them? Well, number one, to get into a coaching program, whether it's mine or somebody else's, I mean, you, it's, uh, believe me, the last thing you want to do is try to figure this out on your own. Go with someone who's done it, listen to the, watch videos, like, you know, get training on it. I have a new program, which is Expired Listing Mastery. I teach all these things and more. I mean, we're talking about, I don't know, eight to ten hours of recorded video time of me talking in depth about all these kind of things. So we talk about rapport building. We talk about, you know, mirror match, NLP. We, I mean, we bring everything in there that, that we, I just did with you on the call into that program. And again, it's 297. It's a great price. It has a lot for the value. And once you buy it to one time fee, once you buy it, you can watch it forever. Awesome. Cool, man. So I'll put that on the, in the show notes for you, Derek. That's no issue. Anything I should have asked you that I didn't? As far as the seller goes? Uh, as far as any questions you think that I might have missed? No, as far as the interview? No, no. I mean, we pretty much covered everything there. I think it's, uh, you did a great job at it. I mean, we covered everything. And we did a lot in 41 minutes. I mean, we went through a listing presentation, a call, two different prequels, and then obviously commentary. So, no, we squeezed a lot in. If I talk too fast, I'm just a fast talker, but we did that in time. Because I would slow down a lot more on a real call. So, Derek, you're closer to Boston. If people want to do referrals with you, uh, tell us where, yeah. where your area is, where your office is. Yeah, I, I work from Boston all the way down to the Rhode Island line and up to the Cape. So I have a pretty big territory, as everyone does in this market, because we're trying to stretch out. So any referrals that come in from Boston to the South Shore uh, to Cape Cod, I cover them. Feel free to give me a call, 508-326-5320. You can catch me on Facebook with my own page, Derek Lipsky, or prospecting with Derek Lipsky. Awesome, my friend. And the final question, my friend, is for our listeners on their path to sales mastery, what is the one thing you want them to take from this interview today? I uh, always agree, no matter what they say. Make, I can't count the number of times you said it yourself to me saying, you're always agreeing. Like, agreeing is a huge part of the battle. Mm. No matter what objection you get, you agree, and then you try to show them a new path. Like, I get that, and were you aware of this? Right? I agree, my friend. Thank you. All right, brother. You, you rock. Talk to you later, David. Masters, if you know me, you know health and nutrition is number one. And that's why I'm an advisor for AdvoCare products. Listen, in my opinion, these are the best products on the planet, guys. You get what you're supposed to get, right? I use the products for health. I use the products for energy. I use the products for wellness. So we have all the different lines from Spark, you know, starting your day with a great energy shot all the way to pre-workout. It's whatever your goals are, right? It's whatever your goals are. You can check out the products at www.livelongersmarter.com. Dot com. That's my website. Or reach out to me. I'd love to have a 30-minute or you know anywhere from 15 to 30-minute conversation with you just talking about your health and nutrition goals and what I can do to help you achieve those goals. So again, products, energy line, or wellness line, whether it's joints, you're getting up there in the age, you just want to keep take care of yourself. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, one of the greatest compliments I get is people uh, you say, wow, I, I, you look amazing. I cannot believe you are the age you are. You know, weight loss. I've helped lots of people, guys, lose weight. Not just lose it, but keep it off 
with the products. And the, th- the cool thing is, I'd say 75% of the people who start with our products, they continue using our products even after they initially tried them, which has been amazing. And strength, if you're into bodybuilding, then hey, you know, Rich Fronin, okay? I don't know if you know who Rich Fronin is. Uh, he's an advocate for, uh, for AdvoCare as well. So amazing products. You can see us. We're featured on NASCAR, uh, professional soccer, college basketball, college football, Men's Health Magazine last month. These are the real deal, guys. LiveLongerSmarter.com is the website. Or reach out to me. if you, Like I said, if you want to have a personal conversation with me, just send me an email in the subject line. Just put Advocate Products. And I'd love, like I said, schedule a 15 to 30 minute call with you to talk about your health and nutrition goals. Guys, you rock. Live longer, smarter. And as Gary Keller eloquently said, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? You rock. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.